So here I am assembling another piece. Um, again, I don't know how many times I'll be repeating myself here, or, but I just want to make sure that I got everything covered. Um, again, just making myself another little string of, of epoxy putty, filling it in around the crack, getting my hand clean. using my little tool and again using this tool to press in the putty just like that and let's see once you've done that you want to make sure that you get enough putty into there I need a little extra bit in there here. Just like that. And remember, just keep using the flat edge, edge of the tool. Use the flat end to make sure that you've got your putty on a level plane. Inside the hole, use this end to round it off right there. Use the other flat bits to make sure that this putty lies smooth up top. And again, use the use the uh, use your fingertips even. It's gonna smooth that putty in and scrape it down. Scrape that putty down, get it down in there, and again make sure you got that little corner exposed right there. That smooth and flat corner exposed. And again, it does not have to be too pretty on the inside because you're not really too worried about that. You just want to make sure you get enough putty all over it so that it will support firmly support. The, uh, the joining of the two corner pieces. You gotta make sure it doesn't move around or anything like that. So there that'll do it. Just again just make sure that you leave enough around here that pieces will smooth will will uh, move smoothly past. Um, just a thought you could probably get away with filling in the putty just in this part here but I like to go all the way around specifically for the sake of making sure this corner piece, this corner keychain piece, does not come undone. And that sucker is not gonna go anywhere. That's why I do it. Just like that. One final note about the uh, the final anchor piece here. Um, you're basically filling it in the same way as all the others, except what I like to do is I like to take my putty and pack it in between the piece and the uh, central core mechanism. Uh, so you need to, again, just, just visualize where it is that pieces will be rotating around and uh, make sure that all those surfaces are smooth. Uh, just take your tool and going to make sure that the gaps in between are nice and smooth. Um, and again, you don't have to be really pretty on the inside, but you do want to be thorough in getting that putty all around, stuck in all around, just to make sure that the piece is uh, nice, nice and solidly anchored, so it doesn't come loose on you later. Now, I have had one piece come loose on me before, and that was probably because the, I let the putty dry a little bit too long before I packed it in, which is again why I prefer working with uh, fresh putty work in small batches but uh, well that's it this piece is done all corners are done uh, all you need to do is let them dry for at least I'll say at least uh, overnight uh, really don't try to mess with them before that because you don't want to disturb the putty you want to let it harden uh, what I'm going to do now is just finish up these edge pieces, fill them in with whatever's left, and then uh, wait uh, eight hours or until the next night. Uh, one more bit of info. Um, regarding the uh, permanent markers that I use to uh, write on the puzzle pieces themselves, um, well, how am I going to take that stuff off later? Well, I like to use a little 91% alcohol. This is our earlier piece that we uh, were marking on to demonstrate where to cut the corners. And uh, generally speaking, uh, <coughs> this stuff will take the permanent marker right off. 
So a little bit more rubbing and that sucker you won't even notice that it was marked up. And especially you won't notice it if you're, you know, making a black puzzle. So there you go. That's what I will do once everything has been reassembled and uh, ready to be stickered. All right, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> it's been about uh, 24 hours now. The epoxy sculpt is hard as a rock. These pieces are not going to go anywhere. These look really good. So now it is time to reassemble the pieces. I, I had previously suggested that uh, you wait at least overnight. I really do recommend that you wait at least 24 hours if possible. So let's get to reassembling. Okay, done. Now once again let's have a look at the alignment of this puzzle. <coughs> now this puzzle is a bit on the stiff side, but we will address that. Any amount of uh, lubrication will work really really well in this puzzle. So whether you use the cube lube, which comes with various uh, Rubik's Cube kits, or if you use uh, you know, the spray silicone, whatever you want to use, will work really well. So now next step is just to clean this up and put some stickers on it. And there we go. Now, um, it's still important to know where the keystone, the keystone, the anchored cube piece is. In this case, I usually mark it with uh, a uh, <coughs> logo sticker. I also tend to uh, put it in the same color arrangement, which is not important. You can pick whatever you want, but this is the color I like. These are the colors I like. All right, so now that the thing is complete, you can try playing with it a little bit. That looks pretty good. It is a little bit stiff, but like I said, doesn't really matter. Just apply a little lube and you're done. So, I hope uh, you have learned something from uh, watching this video tutorial series. I hope uh, I've inspired you. Hope that you've learned something different, something new, and and hope that uh, you might be able to create something like this on your own. Um, thank you for watching the series, and uh, good luck with your own projects. <laughs>